and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This week we're going to be looking at a beginner's guide to long range shooting. Now this is the second segment of a beginner's guide to long range shooting. The first segment, uh, which I recommend you watch before this one, is caliber selection. So our second one is what rifle should you buy? How much should you spend? What features should you be looking at? Okay, we're going to be covering all of this in this video. In future videos, we are gonna be referring to load development, ammunition, uh, how to set up the rifle, what you're gonna want on your rifle, uh, the optic, reticle selections, uh, equipment, so bags and bipods, and targets, of course. So in this segment, for the rifle specifically, let's start going over the features that you're going to want to look for. So the first thing I typically look for when I'm looking for my next uh, precision rifle is a heavy barrel. So we're not gonna talk about brand specifics just yet, we're gonna talk about features just features so the first thing i look for is a heavy barrel now a heavy barrel for two reasons okay so the heavier a barrel the thicker it is the longer it takes to heat up when you're shooting it multiple times so i can probably do 10 shots with this rifle whereas if i was shooting a standard hunting profile barrel i could probably do about three before my groups start opening up okay so that's something that that's one of the reasons why you want a heavy barrel the second one is weight weight is good in, in this final scenario in this in this for once, we actually think weight is good. Because when you're shooting, when you're holding your rifle steady, the heavier the entire rifle optic, the whole combination is, the less will be prone for the little micro movements that you're going to be giving it. Just by holding it, having your cheek on it, the little wind, the slight movement in your table, all these little things will make it move. And you're gonna notice this in the reticle as you try to hold it on your target. If you have a light rifle, you're gonna notice it's gonna, it's gonna like shake just a little bit and it'll be harder to keep on that bullseye. So those are the two things for the barrel. Other than that, you might want a threaded barrel. Now, I don't always think you need a threaded barrel for rifles such as, such as this. I have a Tico T3X varmint chambered in 223. For a 223, a threaded barrel isn't absolutely necessary. Maybe for a sound suppressor, but not necessarily for a muzzle break. The recoil on a 223 is going to be just fine. You're not, you're not going to be getting any like trigger flinch from this. On a 308, 6.5, and the ones all above that, I would say you might want threaded just so you can get that muzzle break on there. So a 223, I don't think you necessarily need it. Okay? So, also, if you are looking to get into the sport, there's something that a lot of people overlook. They think, okay, well, I'm just getting into the sport. I want to shoot out to 1,600 meters. Okay, so what do I need to do the job? Now, in the previous video, we discussed caliber selection. So let's say you want to do 1,600 meters and you're like, I'm dead set on getting a 300 PRC. Well, there's a few issues with that. First of all, as a new shooter, you might develop the flinch, which is when you're pulling the trigger, more like this, you start, you go like this when you pull the trigger, which you're jerking the trigger, you're flinching, so you're being thrown off target, and your groups will be pretty terrible. And you're percentage of hit ratio on that steel gong will be incredibly low. So whereas you may have the best kit, the most suitable kit to do the job, starting off that big might not be a great idea, which is typically why I recommend, you know, newer shooters get something, maybe a 223, you can do up to a thousand meters, moderately easy. I do it out to 750 with these on my 223, um, or a 6.5 Creedmoor with a muzzle brake. So in this example here, I have a Bergara B14 HMR medium profile barrel, not the heaviest, with a core break V3. Now this thing does a fantastic job at taming the already somewhat, somewhat mild recoil of a 6.5 Creedmoor, which if you're a newer shooter, as much as you may think you're a man, you may develop that flinch and you won't be as good a shooter as if you start with something smaller or, you know, if you really, really, really want that sick, that 300 PRC, make sure you get a damn good um, muzzle break, such as the core break V3. They do a really, really good, good job at reducing recoil. And another thing they're really good for is um, reducing muzzle jump. So when you take that shot, let's say without a muzzle break, your entire rifle is going to bounce up like this, which makes it so it's hard for you to, uh, it makes it so it's hard for you to get back on target to spot your own hit or your miss, of course. Wow, I just keep getting thrown around so much. I cannot pick up my hit. Which is why you might just want a muzzle brake. Which is why pretty much on all my newer rifles that I got recently, I make sure they have a muzzle brake. Just because I like to have that on there and it's, it's more convenient and 
if I'm shooting alone, I can spot my own hits or misses. That's pretty much it for the barrel. I don't have much experience with suppressors, so I won't really touch too much on that. But in some states, they're legal, so you might want to consider that. Next is the twist rate for the barrel. So you can't just buy the rifle, you know, it's okay, I'm going to get a 300 PRC, I'm going to get a Tika, let's go with that. You want to make sure that the, the threading for the barrel, so every barrel has these little flutings, has these little cuts in it, to make it so the, the bullet twists as it goes out. Because without that twist, it's just, a, it's just a smooth bore rifle, which is inherently not very accurate. So with these twists, uh, these lands and grooves, they make it so your barrel twists and keep them very, it keeps the bullet going very accurately, okay? So make sure you get the right twist rate for your bullet. So on a, uh, a 6.5 Creedmoor, you typically want something like a one and eight inch twist uh, and even the same thing for a 223, one and eight inch twist is great for the heavier bullets. So on a 6.5 Creedmoor, you can shoot 140 grain bullets and they'll be very stable to, out to long distances with that. So that's typically what you're going to want to look for. Or on a 308, get something like a one and eight inch twist. Okay. I don't have too much, I don't have really any experience with the 300 PRC. So you might have to go looking a little bit further for information on that. Free floated. The next thing you want to make sure that this heavy barreled rifle is free floated. So all the ones I've currently showed you are free floated, including, well, this one. Now, typically when they come in a chassis, well, not typically, absolutely when they come in a chassis, they will be free floated. There'll be nothing between this barrel and the stock or chassis. And that's absolutely what you want. You don't want anything to touch the harmon to mess up with the harmonics of this barrel to throw off those shots. Because if you have anything touching this barrel, that could be that one cause of the, that flyer or just slightly inconsistent groups. So make sure you have a free floated barrel. The next thing I do look for when choosing a precision rifle is that it has an adjustable trigger or that it, the rifle's cheap enough that I could just put in an aftermarket trigger onto the rifle so that I can have a nice clean break. Now on most of my rifles, because most of my rifles end up being Tikas or you know Bergaras or Ruger RPRs, let's just take the Ruger RPR for example. So this here is a fantastically accurate rifle. I got it for a really, really good price. I actually bought it used. I think I paid $1,100. We're in Canada here. They're about $2,100 Canadian, which is it's kind of expensive. So I got a really, really sweet deal on this. Now, at this price, I mean, I don't mind putting in an aftermarket trigger because the trigger in this one is kind of disappointing. It doesn't make it any less accurate. Actually, this is one of my most accurate rifles. So before you think, well, you need a really good trigger, well, you don't. But it makes it a bit nicer to shoot. And it you might have a better chance at better accuracy. It just doesn't make the gun more accurate. So that's kind of my thoughts on choosing the rifle. I make sure it has a heavier profile barrel, uh, it's threaded, that has options for a trigger, or it already has a good trigger in it. For example, the Tikas, I don't really need to put a better trigger in them. They already have really good triggers that go all the way down to about 1.5 pounds, which is exactly where I personally like it. So for example, the Bergara B14 HMR comes with a the stock trigger, which goes down as low as 2.3. For a new shooter, that's fine. That's actually great. You probably don't want to go too light. So for example, one of my friends here, uh, he has a more budget Remington 700 rifle, which is, is, is fine for long range shooting. And his trigger, I think is about four and a half pounds. He tried my rifle and he just couldn't get used to the, the such light, crisp and sharp break. It took him a while for him to get used to it. Um, so you don't really need that. And he's a pretty good shooter, even with that kind of lousy trigger. So yeah, just keep that in mind. You don't absolutely need it. Um, okay aftermarket support. So typically when I'm choosing a rifle, I don't choose a rifle that's not popular for the reason that not all barrel companies are going to make aftermarket options for it, which is what I want. You know, I shoot a lot. I'm going to burn out this barrel. And if you shoot a lot, for example, six millimeter Creedmoor, uh, those barrels will burn out pretty quickly. So, and that's just, just, just part of the game. You know, long range shooting is expensive. You are going to have to replace worn parts just like your car. Yeah. And the chassis, I typically go with something. If I'm doing a build, I might go with something like a Remington 700 action and then buy a chassis for it. The Remington 700 is probably the one almost everybody goes with. It's the most popular barreled action for the reason that it's very reliable, it's accurate, and it's got a long history of being reliable and accurate. So it may not have the smoothest action or the greatest trigger if you go for the more budget options, but it's reliable and it's accurate. If you're looking for a decent option, maybe the Remington 700 is for you. So how much should you spend? Now this is, this is where we go down the rabbit hole, okay? So I've heard people on the internet say, well, you know what, with my $400 rifle, I shoot out to 1,000 meters all day. Well, that's very well possible. The issue is the consistency between, you know, three or four or five hundred dollar rifles is just not there. I mean, I bought a Remington 783 and I know that's like a $350 rifle, but 
if you put the heavy barrel, it's a little bit more expensive. I bought one of those and horribly inaccurate. Um, I mean, to the point that actually had major issues. It had a head spacing issue, which is not something you're going to see on, or very, very unlikely that you would see on a rifle, let's say like the Bergara B14 HMR or on a Tika. So a lot of things go into the reputation. So a lot of the companies that make the really more budget stuff have a lot more, well, they have more quality control issues with their budget stuff because they just have to pump them out in mass volume. They don't have the time to do all the quality control and stuff. They need to make money off these more budget ones to get people into the sport. Now there's nothing wrong with going the budget option. Personally, my recommendations, if you want to go budget or if you need to go budget, your, your limitations are this. The Savage Axis II with the heavy barrel would be the one I would get. We did a review on the Savage Axis II Precision. That thing was very accurate. Uh, I did have some failures to eject, not, not issues, not no failures to extract, but just to eject which sooner or later it kind of broke itself out of that issue, which I mean, at that price, you can kind of expect that you might have some issue. Now, the reason why I recommend the Savage Axis 2 is because Savage has a very good history, a very good reputation of being accurate. Now, they may have some failures to feed, failures to eject, and there are budget options, but they're always, always accurate. Now, this rifle, it performed like that. So in my opinion, if that's if you're if you're going on a budget and that's your budget, the Savage Axis 2 is what I recommend. Now, for most people, because this isn't a this video isn't necessarily based for budget people, I typically recommend you spend over $700 US, okay, or in Can Canada, a bit over a thousand. Because over a thousand dollars, the rifles generally have more quality control, better fit and finish, more reliability, and are more inherently accurate. Now, before we touch on to brands. That, that's pretty much how I've, I've observed things throughout my experience and the experience of those around me. So what should you spend? What brands do I trust? What do I recommend? Now, personally, if you watch the channel, you'll probably already know what I'm gonna recommend, Tikas. So I have three Tika T3X varmints. So I typically started off with something like this. This is actually, well, one of the first ones I bought. Actually, no, this is the last one I bought. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor, which just hasn't gotten much use because I'm just so busy with the other ones. My first one was the Tika T3X in 308, heavy varmint, obviously. And then I gradually upgraded its stock so it looks a bit more like, hmm, so it looks like this. Because for the Tika T3X, there's plenty of aftermarket options. There's rails, there's trigger springs. The, the, the trigger spring, I mean, you can go a little bit lower if you want a, a slightly lighter one. Um, and, and that's what I like to do with them. I mean, like this, in this configuration, this is a fantastic option. You have a, you have a fantastic chassis. Uh, there's the bolt knobs if you, like for flinging rounds in and out. It's really, really nice. Okay, so above $700 US or $1,000 Canadian, you will get a good rifle. Okay, so other than the Tikas, which obviously I like, uh, we've had some really good experiences with the Ruger RPR, the Ruger Precision Rifle, again, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, this one's a little different. It has a foldable stock, adjustable comb height, length of pull, as most of the kind of precision rifles are. It's got a threaded barrel. This is a Gen 1, which somebody put a threaded barrel on. And it's obviously free floated as it should be. It takes AICS magazines, which you'll see something that's pretty common on precision rifles. Most of them will take AICS magazines. I mean, it depends what kind of precision shooting you want to do, of course. If you're doing like F class, I don't think they use AICS. I think they're kind of single feet type stuff. I'm not too familiar with the F class type of um, shooting, but more like the PRS type shooting. Another brand that I do recommend, uh, we have the Savage 110 Precision. Now this one is a little bit different from the others because it has one thing that's different. Now it has a blue printed action. Now this is something that should inherently make it more accurate than the rest because the, all the internals are perfectly trued up. The, this has been perfectly cut so it, it'll be perfectly straight. That bullet will be perfectly straight in that chamber, which should give it more and an advantage for accuracy. In which, I mean, Savage is already well known for accuracy. So even if it wasn't blue printed, I'd kind of still expect pretty damn good results, okay? So Savage is another company that I strongly recommend. Now, I mean, this is just the ones I have 
personal experience with and that I currently own. I got to try some custom actions, some PWS, some Prairie Gunworks. Uh, I think those are like in the $7,000. Now, what is the difference between, let's say, your budget, your mid-level, like the Tikas, and those ones? Unfortunately, I don't have a vast experience with the custom actions, but I do have some. Now, if we start with the more budget stuff, as we mentioned earlier, failures to feed, failures to eject, lack of accuracy is fairly common that the quality control will, over, will, will, will miss because they, they just don't have time, they don't have the money to invest in making sure all of them are perfect, okay? So that's just something you could expect. Maybe one out of 10 is gonna be a lemon. And unfortunately for me, I have that luck. Whenever I buy a rifle, I get the lemon, which I've had quite a few lemons on the channel, which kind of makes it uh, frustrating, but good for you guys because it makes good videos. So um, that's one thing that you won't get at the $700. You, you don't get those failures to feed, you don't get the failures to eject, or they're very, very, very rare. And accuracy is pretty much inherent at that price. With the custom actions, I've tried, got to try some Prairie Gunworks. I've heard that their Cadexes are really, really nice, the Accuracy Internationals. From what I hear, those issues are just non-existent. Okay, so if you have the money, which I mean, this video is all about, let's say money is not necessarily an issue, you might wanna consider doing a custom barrel action just because you know a gunsmith literally goes through putting them together and making sure everything is perfect that quality control you are paying to put it in there right there so which is why i might recommend you go with the custom action which i mean fairly shortly we will be considered doing one on the channel we're going to try to do one all canadian though all canadian barrel a canadian action everything so if you want to see that video make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for that so um, that mostly sums up what I what I recommend in terms of buying your next rifle. Anyway, so if you're enjoy so if you enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll see you in the next review. Don't forget, next video is going to be on load development and ammunition selection. See you next time.